Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner, and this is stage two of Tour of Romy. Little more action in today's stage versus yesterday, but let's face it, it wasn't much more action on stage two than stage one. Just a little bit. There on the last climb, we see some action, but let's go back to the start. 80 kilometers to go. There's a group of six riders up the road, and they got two and a half minutes. That's not much time. On a 100-mile stage, to give two and a half minutes lead to a breakaway of six guys, that's a short leash for the peloton. In the back, the reason why it's short is Inos is riding with only two guys, Andre Amador and Owen Dole. Both these two riders will ride basically 90% of this stage all the way into the last climb. There's six climbs total on today's stage. Five of them are cat twos, and the last one is a category one. On the penultimate climb, you'll see Inos, they back off. They got the break down to about a minute and 15 seconds when it's Rene Tarme up there in the group of six, and he's going to attack and try to go solo. I thought this was a good move. The group clearly in front weren't all dedicated and riding 100% to the finish with the gap only being as big as two and a half minutes throughout today's stage. So Rene Taramai is going solo. The other group of guys from the break are just trying to get over this penultimate climb so that they can be there to help their teammates later before the last climb starts. When Enos back off on the penultimate climb, they allow Rene Tarame to gain an extra minute, minute and 15 seconds. So he's going to go over the penultimate climb with a two and a half minute gap. I thought this was a pretty good move from Rene Tarame, but he'll blow when they get into the valley. They got about a 10 kilometer flat section there. And Rene Tarame, he'll blow, and that time will come back just on its own from a decent pace set back there with Inos. But they're setting it with only two riders all day. Two riders chasing six, and they controlled the whole field. Now, things get interesting on the last climb because when a group of six at attack, it's Sepkus and they're attacking with 20K to go. And it's Sepkus up there in that move and Michael Woods, the Canadian rider. We saw him very good at Liege, best on Liege. And now he's coming here with form and Sepkus is looking fantastic. And we've seen that from his results in day one prologue. Now with those two guys up there, it's putting pressure on Enos. And I want to point out it was Eddie Dunbar now taking over for Enos and Filippo Gagne. And we'd seen Filippo Gagne last year at the Giro be able to get over climbs like this on today's stage and win a stage of the Giro on smaller climbs like we're facing on stage two here at Romandy. He'll blow up. He'll get on the front. He won't pull very long. Eddie Dunbar's already dropped. Filippo's on the front. Now we get some questions answered from Enos. And those questions being early on, we're wondering, I was wondering anyways, of whether or not Rowan Dennis was going to get a chance to race for the win here at Romandy or if he was going to ride the front. Once Filippo Gagne fell off the front there, we see Rowan Dennis get on and whoa, he's the train, right? He's just power, just dieseling up the climb. He's going to pull back that group of six with favorite Sepkus and Michael Woods in that group and he's going to pull it back single-handedly on his own. Now, after he gets it back, the viewers at home, if you're asking yourself, why isn't anyone else attacking? They just can't. Rowan Dennis is setting a pace up there. He's not going 100%, but he's going pretty close, and he's got it strung out. There's about a group of 30, 35 riders left there. Even a couple sprinters sprinkled along inside that group with some fast guys there. Sonny Cabrelli, yesterday's stage one second place finisher. He's in the group, and of course, third from yesterday's stage, Patrick Bevan, ISN, he's up there and he's going to give a fight here in the sprint too. We'll go over the top with Rowan Dennis setting tempo. This next descent as we're coming into the finish is ideal for one guy with the power of Rowan Dennis to control this group. He could ease up before the corners and get a little bit of rest and recovery, come out of the corner slow, then he can get back on the gas and easy just open up the legs. And that's what he's doing. He's just controlling the group. He wants to keep it together. He wants to make it for a sprint out of that group of 30, 35 riders left. In the group, four Bahrain victorious riders in there. And Sonny Cabrelli is one of them. So you know there's plenty of firepower in this group to control it and make it a sprint. Sonny Cabrelli will send Pernsteiner to the front. Now Pernsteiner's having an Incredible ride on today's stage because he was one of the six from the breakaway riders. 
He made it over the category one climb, the last climb on today's stage with the front group of 35. And now they're putting him on the front to ride with Rowan Dennis. The guy's small. Rowan Dennis is quite large. You see the picture there. Rowan's not getting a great draft, but he's getting something. So that's giving the Enos race leader, a Toro Romedy Enos rider, a chance to get a little bit of rest, which will save his legs for the finish. Now it's a good move from Bahrain Victorious because if they put Pernsteiner on the front right then with about 7K to go. They know Enos want to sprint because they want to keep it together. So they have an ally in Enos. And if they put Pernsteiner on there now, he's not going to be able to help in the lead out. He's too small. He's already got tired legs. So you put him on there now, and that'll keep some legs a little bit fresher there from the Enos rider, Rowan Dennis, so that he could do stronger pulls and faster pulls in the sprint, which is what Sonny Cabrelli from Bahrain Victorious won. They get that. Pernsteiner goes to the front, does an excellent job. Remember, he was in the break all day long, and now he's pulling with Rowan Dennis on the front. Incredible ride from the small Bahrain victorious rider to ride with Rowan Dennis here at the finish. With two kilometers to go, Ben O'Connor from AG2R puts in a good attack. He goes, Rowan Dennis accelerates from the front with his team leader back there, Garrett Thomas on his wheel. Richie Port must have opened the gap and that caused a little chaos in that group. As Rowan Dennis catches Ben O'Connor, he looks over his left shoulder and he sees that they got a gap. He's still got some freshness left in the legs and he drills it and he pulls it all the way to under 1K to go with that gap until behind it's Michael Woods for Israel Startup Nation and he's doing the lead out now and trying to keep it together because he has Patrick Bevan, their sprinter that got third on yesterday's stage. This is going to destroy any kind of lead out that Patrick Bevan was hoping to have when Michael Woods has to bring back Rowan Dennis and Garrett Thomas to keep it all together. When we see that happen... 900 meters to go right after Michael Woods catches the front there. We're going to see Bahrain Victorious take the front at 900 meters. Remember yesterday, stage one, they took the front with only one guy and their sprinter, Sony Cabrelli, on his wheel. And that was Jan Trapnik, and he's taken over at 1.4 kilometers to go. Now they're taking over at 900 meters to go, but there's three of them, not just one. Big difference between 1.4 and 900 meters. First rider will do 300 meters and they'll get their last lead out man there will take over about 600 meters before the line. They'll go into a soft right hand turn at about 400. He'll pull the next 100 meters and he'll get Sonny Cabrelli just to under 300, maybe about 250 meters before the line before Sonny Cabrelli starts his sprint. I want to point out yesterday Sonny Cabrelli overlapped a little bit of the wheels of his lead out guy before he started his sprint. Today I noticed Sonny, Cab Sonny Cabrelli hesitates, he starts a sprint, hesitates and sits down again and then starts it again. It's kind of a strange technique to see how the sprinters to see those little mistakes made before the sp sprint starts proper for such a pure sprinter. He goes and he goes at about 250, 225 meters before the line. It's a slight downhill run into the line there so the speed's fast so you know the draft's going to be good. Patrick Bevan did a great job to latch on the Sony Cabrelli's wheel and will come off his wheel with about 100 to 75 meters before the line and it'll be a drag race with the bike throw and Sonny Cabrelli gets his win. We saw him upset yesterday when Peter Sagan won. Today he's celebrating as he comes across the line. Their first win for Bahrain Victorious and Sonny Cabrelli's first win for this 2021 season. It's a great victory, hard fought for a sprinter to make it over category one climb. Want to point out, normally in my day when I was racing with Peter Sagan, on a stage like today, he would have never just sat up. He would have fought to try to be there to do a sprint on this particular stage. We're seeing a different kind of Peter Sagan where he's sitting up and not putting in the same kind of fight that we're normally used to seeing in years past from Peter Sagan. In my book, when you see a group of 35 Anytime I was racing with Peter Sagan, he was always in that group or he'd find a way to get back to that group over the top. Today's race, he backed off. He got the win yesterday already, so he backs off right away, saving the legs for something maybe in the future, and he has the Giro the Italia coming. Other things to point out on today's stage. Mark Hershey gets third on the stage and gets a few bonus seconds and moves up a little bit farther on the general classification. Seen Mark Hershey at the Basque Country, wasn't so sharp. Liege best on Liege. He was very good, and here he's looking incredibly sharp. 
someone to keep an eye out for uh, not tomorrow stage maybe but certainly the stage after that the real mountain stage with the summit finish mark hershey could be pretty active on that particular day team Enos did a great job of controlling with only two riders on today's stage but i want to point out eddie dunbar and Felipe ogania they never had to touch the front for most of the stage when they did ride the front it was for a very short time before they got popped on today's stage so Enos might have to think about that in the future when we come to these other stages two days from now and tomorrow's stage being a circuit with a little bit of a climb in there. Something to look for, something to look and see about tomorrow's stage. Enos might be down to just their three leaders again because clearly Felipe Ogania doesn't have the power that we've seen last year out of his legs during the Giro. Eddie Dunbar is not a climber and didn't get... no didn't stand much of a chance of getting over this last climb on today's stage and he was gone quickly. So even though they only used two riders to ride all day, they still lost their two riders. They're in-between riders. The in-between riders I count as the guys that are really taking up the rope slack between the first workers and their GC guys. And Filippo Gagna and Eddie Dembar, they were left with fresh legs to start the last climb and they blew pretty quickly. So on tomorrow's stage, we could see Enos, regardless of how strong they look today, we could see him down to just their three leaders, and certainly on two, two more stages from today's stage, could be interesting to see how well Enos can hold it together with just their three leaders. We know now it's Richie Port and Garrett Thomas that are their main leaders here at Tour of Romandy, and Rowan Dennis is going to be working before those two, so that's something to keep in mind when we're watching in the later stages. Hope you guys liked the butterfly effect today. It was a great win from Sonny Cobrelli. Not much of an exciting stage until the attacks from Sepp Kuss. And of course, Michael Woods were putting in a big dig there and the action. And it gave us, answered a little bit of questions from earlier in the week with Rowan Dennis's role here on Team Enos. Like and subscribe and I'll see you guys real soon.